Hello, I'm Mix Mowser Mower Man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a little look at two hater lawn mowers that just come in for service. One hater 56, one hater 41, that are used by a local contractor of some description. He just hooked me up on Messenger and said, do you service your equipment? I said, yes, I do. And uh, he said, I've got to bring those down. I've got another hater to, to come in as well, and some strimmers maybe. So yeah, looking good. So maybe got another contractor in, that'd be great. Get his machine all up and running and service, that'd be brilliant. So now's the time to, to sort of get your machine serviced ready for the season. So I've just been out and bought myself um, online just, just some, some cheap copy um, Briggs & Stratton foam filters. I don't buy the genuine ones for these because it's just not worth it. They're just a foam filter. Uh, you can get those for less than about 70p each, something like that. Picked myself up a box of 10 uh, ES spark plugs, a box of 10 B2LM spark plugs. I've got my, my range of oil already. I've got my sharpening um, flappy disc ready for sharpening um, the, uh, the blades. I will replace them if they need it. Um, also, I've got loads of pull cord anyway, because I buy my pull cord by about 100 meter lengths, and uh, so that, that was good from about two years ago, so I'm still getting through that. So yeah, very, very good. So if you want to see how to service your um, Hater 56 um, lawnmower or your Hater 41, they're pretty much the same, um, then stick around and watch this video, because you could save yourself a few pennies um, rather than put it into a lawnmower dealership and getting them to service it at a cost to you, where you could probably do a, your own service for around about 15 to 20 pound, give or take, depending on where you, where you buy your parts, whether they're OEM or whether they're Chinese spares. You run the risk if you do it either, either, so it's up to you. If this is your first time you want to mix Mose and Mer Man, hit the old subscribe button and whack the old bell. Set notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. So without further ado, let's get down dirty. Let's get the first service of the year underway. Right, so let's uh, really pip. We go outside for a walk. Let's go. Right outside for a little stroll. Let's go and get the first lawnmower in. Now, just a word of warning: if you're going to get into servicing, you need to make sure that the machine you're going to service is actually running right. Because if it's not running right when you go to service it initially, that becomes a repair, and you'll be in a repair service. So. Let's bring it back here a touch because uh, I use a new phone and so we've got a bit of a wide angle lens on it, not compared to my to my GoPro. So I've got two in. Uh, I've got a Hader 56 and a Hader 41. We'll come back to the 41 in a bit. Let's try the Hader 56. That'll be the first one on the old bench, I think. Let's have a look, little look at it. Let's do that up. Now, it is a standard service, so that is to include blade sharpen and balance, spark plug, all change, pull cord if necessary, uh, blade sharpen and balance if necessary, all change, all sorts, of, all sorts of good stuff. Doesn't include the belt, because the belt is additional. I did tell him that, um, but he did say that it, it, it pulls like a train anyway. He did also say the electric start doesn't work, because I think the battery's flat. Yeah, there's a dodo. Oh, that's no, not even plugged in. I was looking at it when he turned up so we'll put the battery on charge for him but i just say i'm a bit gimmicky because there's no alternator on these so so it does work but battery's flat yeah. so there's not enough air to start that let's see if it starts because as i say if it doesn't run right then it's not a service it's a repair service but it's got to run it's got to run fine A little bit of a rattle there too. I want to look at that. That might just be a re uh, the recall's a bit loose, uh, but it all runs. So let's get up on the bench, get it serviced. I'll give it a quick little run before I do that because I want to get the oil nice and thin. So I'll take the oil out whilst it's nice and warm. That'll be easier, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, that'll do that for running then. So now the oil will be nice and thin. Any bed pit, girl. We can now get the machine up. How are you, darling? Out the way, please. Good girl. Hold up. I know you're scared, but you have to learn that not, not all noises are bad. Good girl. And that's it. 
So that's up on the old bench. Let me get it pumped up. Let me get the door shut. Let me get Pip settled down in the bed because she's a bit scared because of lots of different noises. And we don't like to have a scared dog. Hey, Pip, come here. Good girl, come here. It's not all bad. It's not all bad, princess. Some noises are quite good fun, to be fair, if they are. Good girl. Right. Let's get it pumped up and start taking it apart. We'll go from there. Okay. Ooh. So first thing to do, remove the HT lead. The machine is now safe and remove the plug. Now these services are very, a very, very standard service. Um, very, very quick to perform. A bit warm this plug will be because it's been run up. And I want, I want to take the plug out, but what I don't want to do is put the new plug in. Because uh, you might cross thread it. So I take it off, it's a bit, little bit warm, not too bad. Once the plug's been removed, reach straight for your flat headed screwdriver. Uh, that one there, and on the side here is a little tiny flat headed um, bolt, or it's a, an eight mil. That's, that's, not, that's been chewed up before. Uh, short's an eight. If there's an eight, why don't I reach for a 10? So in here is just your air box, and all we're gonna do is remove uh, remove the air box, quite straightforward. And a lot can be told by the air filter if the machine's been serviced recently or not. To be fair, it has been serviced a little while ago. It's not actually too bad at all. So it needs to be renewing. We can't put we can't put that in there. I'll leave the air filter out for now because I won't put the air filter straight in. So I want to get to that oil whilst whilst the machine is nice and warm. I want to be getting to the oil. So it's already done a spark plug and we've done the air filter. I'll remove the two um, Phillips screws up the top here because something's a bit loose up here. I heard it rattling. And uh, that's just part of the service, just to make sure everything is as it should be. So it might just come adrift up here. So just a quick little, it's a safety check is all we're doing. Something appeared to be a little bit loose, loosey goosey. There, there you go, that's what it was. So all it is, is the standard obligatory rivets are a little bit loose. So actually it's nothing to worry about. I have identified the fault. What you can do is drill those out and re-rivet them, but it's not part of the service. That'll hold, it's just down to the age, a little bit of wear and tear. So that's all that is there, not overly concerned. That's good. Um, I'm gonna take the battery off because I wanna put this battery on trickle charge. Just unplug the battery, slide the battery out of this housing. And I've got a special charger just for that, which will, um, uh, charge the battery up um, and then when he wants to use it as a, as a battery start he can but I did inform him they don't have an alternator so they don't recharge themselves so every time the battery starts to fail next day take the battery off put it in charge overnight and you better key, key start it every time rather than pulling it so I'll put that on charge and I'll come back to you in two seconds. Okay so around the other side of the machine because I want to do it all chain because th this, this machine has not that long been run up a few tools knocking down over the place, got loads of bits of kit in, which has either been done, waiting for people to turn up, or uh, other way around. So we're just gonna take the all dipstick out. I mean, I've got an extraction pump, which you can buy on eBay. Um, they're about 30, 40 quid. And all you do is you just you just put your tube in, and then you just pump away. Once the oil, that goes there, once the oil has been warmed up a little bit, it come out so much easier. Now, I've got quite a thick tube on here, that's already saying empty, but I don't believe the machine. I think the machine's lying. So tip the machine backwards, and then tip the machine over towards me. Into that corner. And that'll get it all out. There it goes. So that's all the oil out. I dare say the machine was running on, on low oil. That's good. Take that out. Really dirty oil. It's been running all season, no doubt. That's good. So I'll leave it out for now. Now that there's no oil in the machine, all I now want to do is um, tip the lawnmower backwards <coughs> so that we can then get to the blade. Okay, so now the oil is out of the machine, we can now tip the machine up onto its bum, what I call the uh, CPR position. Now I've got a little tiny screw right at the end of my wall here, which I put there on purpose. And what we do is we tip the machine up and then we can then hook it onto that screw and it'll sit there 
as happy as Larry. <coughs> um, H2 has been removed and also the spark plugs have been taken out too. And we'll have a 14 mil bolt that's underneath here, which we now need to remove. So we get the blade off and then we'll go from there. So let me just grab my half inch impact and I'll come back to you in two seconds. Right, I've got my half inch impact. <coughs> I want a 14 mil. Trusty old 14 mil. Uh, that one, I think. That's 14. Now these are generally put on with, with relative force. I use my half inch impact to remove them. And they come off lovely with a half inch, which is good. Just give it a bit of a tap because they, they get stuck onto the friction disc. So just a little bit of a tap with Mr. Hammer. Mr. Soft Blow, give it a tap, off it comes. There'd be a little tiny washer that come off with that and that washer goes with a bevel side up that goes up inside the blade, just like that, okay, if you're not quite sure. Blade doesn't look too shocking. In fact, there's, uh, there's a big nick in there. We might do something with that. We'll try and profile it if we can. There's quite a big nick in there. He's hit something quite solid, um, but we'll see how we get on. So let me uh, try and get that sharpened up. And I'll be back to you as when I've done it. Right, now the blade itself. I've done just on one edge, which, which looks pretty good. Uh, but the other edge is uh, quite well mutilated. So I've got to try and sharpen that up. Now I have got ear protection and face protection with me. Try and put that into there. Just so it fits nice. Okay. I'm just gonna sharpen this up and I'm gonna show you how I, uh, how I do it. Just to make sure we're getting a, a decent edge on this. Because um, otherwise what you tend to do is uh, not put a very good edge on it if you don't remove the defects that are within within the blade itself. And uh, you end up just taking too much material off, but treat the defect first. And then you should be pretty good. So let me just get you set up just around about here somewhere. And I'll zoom you in just so you can see roughly what's going on. And you'll be able to see the defect in its entirety. So there's a defect there. Okay, now what I'm gonna do I'm going to run the, 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 um, the flappy disc all the way down this edge first and to, just to remove that defect right out of it, okay? I might have to bring it around this way because I'm right-handed. That would be a, a smidgen easier for me. Let's put you about there. So ear protection on, face protection on because you only get one set of eyes and then remove the defect. So the defect is here, here. Remove the defect. <laughs> Okay, defects now being removed, as you can see. So there is no longer a defect there. So now we can now reprofile. There you go, defect now removed. But what's now is important is to turn the blade over and then to dull off the back of the blade. Now, once we've done this, of course, what we're then gonna need to do is to balance the blade up to make sure the blade is actually balanced and remove any excess weight off any end if it's not. And then I'll just balance it up and see how we're getting on. Okay, so I've got my blade balancing tool. Looking right down at the center, it looks to be on, on level ground. Smash that on top. 
Yeah, that's good enough. It could do just a little tiny bit off of this one, which would be the side I, I didn't have a defect on. I might take just a feather edge off of there, but it's it's about 90% correct. And it's a lawnmower. It's not a proverbial. So I'm just going to take this a little tiny bit off, not a lot. I'm going to try that again. That's better. So one balance blade, all done, all profiled, looking nice. That last another season, no need to expenditure for, um, for a new blade this year, but maybe next. Okay, so blade now um, balanced, sharpened. There's still quite a bit of life left on this blade. Um, to be fair, so it doesn't need a new blade. The new blade's around about, I don't know, 30, 40 pound. But uh, trying to help the guy out here, um, trying to keep costs down if we can. Why throw away a blade if uh, if it doesn't need it? So if that's all been done, I can now put this little tiny washer back on, centering locating um, washer. That goes on so that the, it hits the bottom of the blade because you want your lift to be up on the inside. So just put get your bolt, stick it through, Centralize your your bolt onto your onto your friction disc. Grab your half inch impact if you got one, and then I don't want I don't want on massive torque. I don't want on quite low to be fair to do it back up. I just want to snap it otherwise. A bit hard on that Mick. That's plenty. So it's not coming off, but it's not on there colossally tight. So that is the blade um, sharpened and balanced. We can now put the lawnmower back down onto its roller and wheels. That's good. And the only one thing else I want to do now is I'm not quite sure uh, what type of fuel this gentleman's been running. Just want to take the carburetor nut off, just to give it a, a bowl off, just to give it a bit of a clean to make sure that when it goes back after service, it's not actually going to fail with a fuel problem because uh, no one's cleaned the carburetor. Carburetor is not part of the service. Okay, so all I want to do is just want to get underneath here, where the carburetor is, uh, there's a little tiny half inch um, uh, jet bolt there. I'm just going to clamp the fuel off with my, with my clamps. I don't know how much fuel's actually in the machine, to be fair. So have a little look. I'm shouting because I've got ear, I took my earplugs in. That's better. Um, there's a little bit of fuel, not a great deal. And all we're going to do is just going to get a rag because although the machine is very, very old, um, it's still someone's, someone's piece of equipment on smashing the paintwork up. A bit of a rag, just to protect against any fuel spillage. And I wanna get a half inch, a half inch socket, would be good. Now my half inch has actually gone for a Burton on my, uh, on my big set. I've actually lost that, I don't know where that's gone. I'm a little bit annoyed with myself for losing it. That's a half inch on a small set, that'll do me lovely. And I want a little tiny uh, rat chip. I probably had one out earlier on. And all we're going to do is hook up the half inch underneath here, a little tiny half inch bolt there, and just loosen that off. And now you're going to put your finger up onto the up onto the bowl because we don't really want the bowl to come out as we don't have to. If a bowl comes out, it's not the end of the world. Nine times out of ten, they just stay there, but. Just taking a little tiny bit of time here, the bowl's gonna come off anyway. Now, the good thing about these quantums is that the bowl is actually like countersunk inside the bowl. So once you remove the nut out, you can remove the bowl, bowl comes out, and you can tell just what's in there. And actually there's a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of, bit of um, water in there. Not a great deal, just a little tiny bit. The bowl's in good condition, which is great to see. But he does say he does use normal, regular pump gas. So because he does that, um, I have told him or advised him to try and look over to other means of petrol like the ethanol free stuff, um, Aspen fuels and what have you. Uh, not that I'm sponsored because I'm not, but they are, they are just a better fuel. Um, although they're more expensive, they, 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 they do better for your machine. Um, and it could be a question, just put your prices up slightly just to counteract the, um, the cost of the fuel. But now just give the bowl, the outside of the bowl, a bit of a clean and a tidy. Just want to grab this little tiny jet here. This is the one that you might, you'll have problems with straight after a service. You can always guarantee it. That's the one you have problems with. And I've got a little tiny drill here. 
which is what I use on a daily basis, just to drill out these little tiny jets. Now, on most quantums, on most quantums, uh, this is the one you want, little tiny thumb drill. And all you want to do is just literally just run that in very, very gently. And all we're doing is just refacing that. See how, see how easy that went in with no effort. See that? Really lovely. Now that's what you want to happen. Just to, like just, just running it gently. And all it's doing, that's just taking off all the months and months and months of grime. It's all it's taking off. It's not taking no material off. It's just refacing that drill. It's all uh, refacing that jet's all it's doing. Okay. You can actually pull it out after that. <laughs> Give it a little bit of penetrating lube, something just to just to clear it out. It contains a bit of carburetor cleaner, would be good actually. A little bit of carburetor cleaner, let me just get a quick little blast. Lovely, that jet's now running. We're happy with that. And now all we want to do now is put that bowl uh, back in. Just go a bit careful because you don't want to introduce any extra dirt as you do that. Just gently, gently, gently ease that back up into place. Now it's very hard to do it whilst the camera is rolling. I'll try to get my big fat head in there. There it goes. And just make sure that the carburetor is centralized, the bowl is centralized. Once it is, get your little tiny jet, locate the hole. Very hard to do it in limited space. And just slowly start to run that back up. Once it bites, you know you're away. Yeah, mine's bitten. But now you can, now you can go with confidence. You haven't done a carburetor clean. All you've done is you just rimmed out that main jet, okay? Um, because a carburetor service is a, is a completely different issue, okay? It's not, a, it's not part of the service itself. But I just like to, with these quantums, just draw that jet out, put that back into place, release your fuel clamps, leave it for three or four minutes on a fresh bit of rag, make sure you've got no fuel leaks. And if you've got no fuel leaks, you're golden. Okay, so to finish off the service, all we've got to now do is stick in a new air filter. <sighs> That's all good. So new air filter goes in. We're happy with that. Just want to choke the machine first before I do anything. Choke the machine fully. Yeah, full choke on the machine. That's lovely. If it wasn't just adjust the cable up, so it actually does choke the machine. Grab your eight mil. Uh, excuse me, eight mil. Uh, 10, that one there, I think. Is that eight, what's that? What is that? That's a nine. Grab your eight mil, loosely do up that little tiny nut, uh, bolt, sorry. Let's do him up nice and loosely. Get that running. <laughs> That's nice. Now I'm not gonna bother doing a, um, a pull cord. The pull cord looks fine. Now I did say to a gentleman, I only do blade sharpen and balance on pull cords if necessary. If they're not necessary, I don't have to do them. Um, I don't believe in just charging people money for stuff that they don't need. If that pull cord's good, then the pull cord's good. So we can now um, grab ourselves a B, an NGK B2LM spark plug, which is what the correct one for this. <clears throat> and then we'll just put a new spark plug in. The engine's now nice and cold, which is good to see. And we're just going to check condition of HT inside. It's not rusty. We're going to put the new spark plug in. So nick that up just to compress the washer on the spark plug. Just a compression washer. Hasn't got to be tight, just it's got to be snug, very snug. Once that's in place, we'll leave it HT'd off for now just because for safety of the machine. Let me grab some oil and get the oil change done. Okay, oil change time. Uh, just about to get me oil. There it is. Um, I thought I had four bottles of this oil, but obviously not. It's, it's, all, it's somewhere in the same shed and I can't find it one or the other, which is not uncommon. Um, so I use a good high quality grade of oil. Um, and we want about four and a half to 500 millilitres of oil, give or take. So I'm gonna go for just over, just over four and a half, okay? Because it's easier to put less in and top up than it is to put too much in and have to, have to take it out. So that can now go straight into there, pour it nice and slowly guys, don't, don't pour it in too fast. Or it'll overfill, spill oil everywhere. And no one will thank you for that. There it goes. Nice, fresh oil for an old machine. This is quite an old girl, this one too. Yeah, 
and it all goes. I know definitely that just under or just under 500 mil will we'll just about nearly fill this machine up. Very nearly. So I just want to let that settle now. Let that settle away. And we'll come back to that in two or three minutes once it has settled. Um, just to check the level and top off, okay? I'll leave the battery on charge overnight because um, it's a trickle charge, trickle charge um, bit of kit and uh, it will require that. Now the only thing left to do is just to double check the height adjustment all works, check the cables are all working, dead man's handle, all that sort of stuff, okay? That, that's all part of the service, making sure that the machine is good to go out the door, okay? And, that, and that's what uh, people are paying you for, to make sure you're using good reliable parts and that um, the machine is actually ready to rock and roll. So when he goes out there Monday morning to go and cut his first lawn, this machine will start, it will run, it will do everything it should do. There's no screw in there, Mix. So we'll find a screw to put in there in a second, just to hold that down, because that'll that just flap around in the wind and cause half the rattle. So let me go find a screw for that and I'll come back to you in two seconds. Right, so that should now be the Hater 56. All done. What are you barking at, Pip? I'm a cat. Um, so, let me just spin you around here. Uh, that's a Hater 56 now all done. My lawn looks lovely, but I know it's not. My lawn is absolutely shocking at the moment. Pip's trying to chase a cat. So, Hater 56 now all done, all topped off. Just want a little tiny bit. A uh, bit of a clean since WD-40, just a bit of a shine up. Pip, come on. <whistles> Good girl. Come on. Come on. Pip, Pip, come on, girl, come on. So, let's try and start it now. Um, the battery's still on charge, so. Uh, let's bring that height control up just a tad. I'll leave it where it is, he's actually set it where he wants it, so. Uh, pull start, see what happens. So it wants to tick over, just adjusting slightly as well. Choke, still cold. That rattling noise is that recall. But all good, so I'm going to adjust a tick over, make sure it does idle right for when uh, he just um, wants to idle it. And um, that's up my service. So now we get on with the Hater 41, uh, which is next to, uh, next to do. And that'll be that gentleman's mowers all done, ready for the season. Okay, so that's the Hater 56. Now we're up and running. New spark plug, new air filter, all changed. Base sharp and balanced. Pull cord was fine. Adjustment on the tick over as well, so it does tick over. That'd be good. Um, drive is very, very strong as well, that's good. And a quick little carburetor bowl jet um, clean as well, just to make sure that, that runs good for the season. It's good to go. So there you go. If you want a quick little uh, video on how to service your Hater 5648 or your Quantum engines, there's a video for you. Hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to leave the old subscribe button whacked. Whack the old bell, set notifications to all. Well, you'll be told next time I upload a video. And I look forward to seeing this episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until then, guys and girls, much more importantly, take it easy.